The key to making a good end screen is to have different modes in your game. So one mode will show that the game is being played, and another mode will show that you're in a state of having lost, and another mode will show that you've won. So for example here, uh, if I go into the main file, you can see that I have set the mode to play. Now this game, I'm going to put a comment here just so it's obvious uh, that the modes are what the modes are. So I'm going to say play, win, and later on I might add lose as well. And so when I initially in the init screen here set the mode to play, uh, the, those are my different options there. Now the key point here is that when the game is initted, we're setting it to play, but Later on, something might happen in our game. Let's say, uh, in this case, the timer runs out, but let's say you get hit by an enemy. At that point, uh, you need to set the play, the mode to lose, or you need to set the mode to, um, to win or whatever it is. So for example, here, um, I've just got this game here that just waits for the, you don't have to remember this code, but it simply waits for this timer to go down and then sets the mode to win. But you won't wait for a timer to go down. It might be when the score hits a certain amount or, or whatever it is. Whatever triggers your game in the code, simply say mode equals win or mode equals lose, and that will set your end screen the way that you want it. Now, changing that variable to store a string being win or lose or something like that, remember this is a string with the quotation marks around it as opposed to a number, that's not going to be helpful unless you actually do different things in the game based on the mode. So let's have a look here at some uh, the end screen. So I've put in the end screen here uh, a function called draw end screen. So the end screen uh, has it's going to draw text here. You win. It's going to uh, to say say press space to start. But this function here is only going to get drawn if the mode is you win. And so I'll go back to the main function here, and you'll see here in the draw function, this is the one that gets run uh, sixty not sixty times a second as often as the screen wants to redraw. It's usually sixty times a second. So here it says, if mode equals equals play, then draw the game. Else if the mode equals equals win, then draw the end screen. Okay, same thing. An update here also uh, operates differently. If the mode equals equals play, then update the game. If else, else if mode equals equals win and the keyboard.space is, uh, is being held down. Then, how do we restart the whole game? Well, we can just call init. Micro Studio calls init once at the start of the game to set everything else up, everything up for us, but there's nothing stopping us calling that function if we want to reset the whole game. Now, just be aware here, calling init doesn't actually restart the whole game. It just runs this function again. So you have to make sure that you've put all of the things you want to set up for a new game inside the init function, okay? Don't just leave them hanging out somewhere, not in, in a function, okay? So that's how it works practically. The second question is, how do you get it to flash like this? Well, it's flashing like that because of something called the alpha. Now, when the alpha equals one, it's totally, uh, fully white or whatever other color you've got there. When the alpha equals zero, it's completely transparent. So we want the alpha to go between one and it doesn't get completely transparent, it gets to about 0.4. I've saved you the trouble of programming all of this uh, because I've created something for you called get flash value. And you'll see here in this draw function, all we need to do is before we write before we draw the text, press space to restart, I simply set the screen dot alpha to get flash value. And then afterwards, I set the alpha back to one, which is the normal. Otherwise, everything else in the game will get drawn uh, flashing in and out. Might be a cool effect, but it's not really what we want. Now this get flash value uh, function will return one frame, it'll return one, and then maybe the next frame it'll return 0.99 and the next one 0.98 and it will go down and up over time based on the, the clock in the on the computer.
Now this is not built into Micro Studio, so on the web page uh, you'll need to follow the link and uh, import the helpers uh, game probe help helpers function. Hopefully you've done that, uh, that all already, so you'll know how that works. Now there are a lot of different moving parts setting up your end screen, um, so I really suggest that if it's not working just slowly work through see if you've made any mistakes in the code somewhere and if you're stuck get help from someone else or from me good luck and i can't wait to see your end screen